Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today, we're going to be talking about gusset plates. This thing right here is a gusset plate. It's a construction feature of the ship, a, a structural feature, and um, it's a pretty interesting piece. It, it's one of those common questions we get asked when visitors are walking on board and they come to an area where we have ripped up the teak wood, like this area right here, for, for the uh, restoration process. And uh, so, so they see these, which normally you can't. There are some that you'll see in the overheads underneath, uh, which is another interesting design feature. Some gusset plates are above and some are below, and, and the, the Navy does that intentionally to add strength, whether you're being hit in whatever direction. But uh, yeah, so th this is just a plate that you're riveting through to get uh, two adjoining plates attached. So sometimes when plates are riveted together, they're just set like this. However, when you've got multiple plates coming together at a four-way intersection, that would start to look like uh, folding the top end of a cardboard box with everything overlaying each other, uh, which you can get that cardboard to bend, but this is inch, inch and a half thick STS. It does not bend like that. So on the main deck of Iowa class battleships, it tends to be the uh, seams that are running forward and aft actually overlap each other. The seams that are running side to side are butted up to each other with a gusset plate over them. And then the rivets go through the gusset plate and the steel plate, and that's what holds it together. What's interesting about these plates as used on Iowa class battleships, you notice they have this curve around them. That is part of the Washington Naval Treaty, and one of those things that makes these ships gold platers. Iowa class battleships were built with World War II already going on in Europe. So they were trying to churn out as many of them as possible. In fact, the Navy authorized two more than they initially wanted because it was simpler to get these ships out than it was to complete the design of the much better or much larger follow-up class that the Navy actually wanted to build at that time. However, unlike say the Liberty ships, which are designed to be mass producible, they're blocky, they can be built in segments and thrown together uh, really easily, which involves a lot of welding and deleting the riveting entirely, uh, Iowa class battleships are not built to be prefabable. Uh, as a capital ship, the US Navy chose to expend a lot of resources building a bunch of unique uh, pieces that would have to be basically hand pieced together at the Navy yards to make these ships. And that's probably part of the reason why two of the six Iowa class battleships are never completed because it is so difficult to slap them together as opposed to mass producing some of these smaller ships. Um, the, the quote unquote war built ships. And the nice thing about gold plated ship, uh, which is typically the terms for the inner war ships that, that aren't built with wartime expedient measures in place is, is that they'll last longer. And the Navy sure got a long life out of the Iowas. Now, so this curve is so that it's giving just the right amount of metal for the rivet to grab onto. However, with other battleships, Yamato, King George V, Bismarck, they would just use a simple rectangular plate. But the US Navy is trying to lighten the ship both to adhere to the Washington Naval Treaties and, as if you can save weight on this sort of stuff, structural materials, then you've got more weight for adding any aircraft guns and radar and everything else that has to be added in wartime. So by cutting all this away, you're saving a few ounces here, a few pounds there, but I don't know how many gusset plates are used on the whole ship. It seems like there's one about every 20 feet or so um, and then the whole 109 or 108 foot width of the ship. So there's a ton of these in use. You're saving a, a fair amount of weight. 
You're doing this at huge expense though, because there's gotta be some guy cutting this shape into them. And then again, you can't prefab it. You've gotta bring it and lay it out and drill all these rivet holes just right uh, so that you can actually rivet these plates together. So gold plated, you're spending a lot of money to do this, but it's saving you weight. While this is a, uh, a good construction feature, it makes it a pain for us redecking the ship because now our main deck isn't smooth. We've got to go around this. And that's why we came up with the panel system for the teak wood. Uh, whenever we were planking over this, we would have to shave out roughly an inch uh, by, what is this, uh, about a foot long with a curved edge on the underside of teak, which is not the softest wood to work. So by using a panel system, uh, we've got an inch of marine grade plywood, and that's where we're sacrificing all of our material. So at least before the pandemic, plywood was cheap. Nowadays, we're gold plating our teak wood deck because of construction costs. But uh, so we're not taking that out of our teak, and then the teak over top is completely smooth. What are some other gold plate features you can think of with Iowa class battleships? that made them excellent vessels, but not the quickest or cheapest to make? Let us know in the comments section down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support. There's a link in the description below if you'd like to donate to the museum. There's also a link in the description below if you'd like to buy any of the teak wood that we've ripped up. That also supports the museum and their ongoing restoration projects. You can finally support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about our museum and what we're doing. Thanks for watching.